could have been me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the command post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. So we got some heat from the league meetings, the NFL league meetings being held in, in Phoenix, Arizona this week. Um, everybody who's anybody is there. Owners, GMs, presidents, um, coaches, you name it, they're there. This happens every year. Um, and you usually get sound bites from, you know, GMs and, and coaches. They're made available to the media. They have this, you know, uh, luncheon. And th that's where you get a lot of these sound bites. Yesterday, there was a specific press conference held for a uh, GM, Martin Mayhew. Uh, he spoke for roughly, you know, 25, 30 minutes. Um, and it was some good stuff, man. Um, I, I think it was roughly 20 minutes or so. Um, it was some good stuff. Um, and then Ron spoke today, and we'll talk about that um, on a different show because that's a, a another uh, separate entity onto itself, and there was so much to take from that. So I want to talk about Martin Mayhew and what he had to say, and I, and I actually made a list of things that he said that I thought were pertinent. And um, th th here's the thing that I love about Martin Mayhew. Martin Mayhew gives you just enough, not too much. You know, sometimes with Ron, you give him a little elbow. You're like, shut up, shut up. You know, like he's talking too much. When Martin, he gives you just enough, you know, to, to wet your palate a little bit, but not enough to where you're like, damn, I feel oversaturated here. You know, he gives you just enough. So he spoke today and the message with him is consistent that's uh, that's the thing i appreciate with martin mayhew all right i don't always love his message but i love the consistency of it and when you're a control i'm not a control freak but i like to be in control and when when you like to be in control the thing that probably gives you the most comfort is consistency. You know why? Because you can control an environment or a situation if it's consistent because you know what to expect. All right? Hard to control a situation when there are multiple variables and there are things that could happen at any moment that could change your plan. That makes you uncomfortable when you like control. I like control. So when someone gives me a consistent message, I appreciate it. And look, I, I just want consistency across the board, okay? If you're going to lie to me, consistently lie to me. Like Mike Shanahan, he was a liar, okay? And I knew it, and I could respect the fact that he was going to lie to me, so I could say, hey, I don't believe that shit my, Mike talking about. Because Mike was a liar, right? L Mike was going to lie to me. Consistently, he lied to me. I can respect that, because I know what to expect. With Martin Mayhew and Ron, the messaging has been pretty consistent. It's been simple, and I can respect that because they haven't lied to me pretty much yet, okay? So when they say, not interested in Lamar, haven't really discussed, you know, going out and making something happen with Lamar, I believe them. They haven't lied to me yet. It is lying season, so take everything with a grain of salt. You know the mantra, uh, mantra. you know the mana, uh, motto and the mantra, Okay. Believe half of what you see, none of what you hear, even if it's spat by me, your man, Louis T. You know what it is. It's lying season. However, they haven't lied to me yet. So when he talks about, you know, Lamar and pretty much says, look, we evaluate every single player that's available on the free agent market. And he said to a man, we talk about probably 100 free agents and we only actually put a contract together in front of someone and discuss it with 10 to 20 guys on a yearly basis, okay? Uh, so he's like, Lamar Jackson's not one of those guys. We're not entertaining that with him. We're good. We're good over here, okay? Uh, and, but he, he took it a step further, and he was like, we're not just confident in, you know, the direction we're heading in. We're confident in Sam Howe, you know? We really feel like we've got our guy – he takes it a step further than Ron does. Ron is non-committal because Ron 
has gotten himself into trouble by committing to a quarterback prematurely, not having a quote unquote competition and it blew up in his face. And so Ron has told himself, I'm never doing that again. Even if I know Sam Howell is going to be my starter, I am not going to give him the satisfaction of being able to hear me say it out of my mouth that he's the starter. He's going to have to earn it, even though it's pretty much his job to lose. So new, 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 new how order. Martin pretty much said there's nothing developmental about Sam Howell. Okay. Sam has three years of starting experience at UNC. He was here a full year under Heineke and Wentz. He got to learn. And I think what a lot of you forgot was that this dude was the backup quarterback after the Bears game when Sam, when Carson Wentz got hurt. Sam Howell was one snap away from getting in the game. A lot of people forget that he was the backup. So he had to prepare. Ron talked about that. But a lot of people forget. And I remember saying to myself, what if Heineke gets hurt? Like, we really are one snap away from Sam Howell being in the game. It never came to fruition. But there were a couple of instances where Heineke got banged up a little bit, especially that Texans game where he could barely, you know, hand the football off. He had another little hiccup against the Falcons. And you're like, is he good? Is Sam going to have to come in here? So Sam got a lot of experience last year. And then you couple that, and it all culminated in the Week 18 performance against Dallas. But as I've said numerous times, it's not just the Week 18 game. Yes, that's a small sample size. But you got plenty of tape to comb over at UNC. He can play ball. And Martin May, he said, there's nothing developmental about Sam Howe. We don't view him as a fifth-round developmental quarterback. Okay? Those two things don't go in the same sentence with Sam Howe, developmental and fifth round. We're not putting those two things together. Generally, when you get a fifth round quarterback, he is developmental. But Sam Howell isn't your average standard run of the mill fifth round pick as I've been trying to communicate to you guys over and over again. And pretty much Martin Mayhew doubled down on the fact that there's no developmental quarterback here in Washington. We got a guy that we're very confident in and we think he's going to be a damn good football player. Touche. I agree. I'm right there with you in lockstep. Let's go win some football games. Offensive line depth. This was probably the most jarring thing that uh, GM Martin Mayhew said because I believe him and I'm kind of right there with him. He said, right now on the offensive line, we made some moves. We were aggressive in free agency and um, we like some of the pieces that we've added. We feel like we can field a starting offensive line, but we don't feel like we have adequate depth at the position yet. Okay, I I thought after looking at what had been done that that was the whole sole purpose of what you did and that the depth of the line was the strength, not the quality necessarily, but the quantity of guys that exist on the offensive line was the strength of what we had going on. But apparently he's like, nah, bro. (laughs) We far from done, which we all agree with. You're far from done, okay? We should not be finished nor satisfied because we added Nick Gates and Andrew Wiley. There should be more left to be done on the offensive line. And so he's like, yeah, we don't have the depth. So that tells us there will be more additions via, uh, and and he also mentioned um, Trenton Scott as a guy that they really like as well. So, um, I, less of Abdullah Anderson, who I kind of comped Trenton Scott to in terms of his signing. Like, hey, I don't really know where he fits. You know, he's not a throwaway. Trenton Scott is not a throwaway signing. Abdullah Anderson may not be one either, but I think he's more of a throwaway than Trenton Scott is. Just, you know, so we're clear. I think they feel like Trenton Scott can provide them with more depth on that offensive line. And the, the fact that he's played every single position other than center, you know how they love their positional flex. That gives him a chance to stick around on this roster and, and carve out a niche for himself. So uh, he talked about the line depth and he said, hey, we don't have enough. So that lets me know that in the draft, we will be uh, searching out offensive line help, which we should and they will. 
Okay, that was one of the things that I saw. I had to rewind it a couple times. Like, well, did he say what I think he just said? Yeah, he did. Uh, that the depth is not there on this team yet on the offensive line. Okay, touche. Uh, salary cap. That is not what Ron said. I'll just say that. Salary cap wise, he talked about how they really set up their cap situation to be as clean as possible. And the, the term he used consistently was cash to cap, meaning there's not a lot of borrowing for from future years to allow you to space that you need to operate this year. You see that a lot around the league. We hear about the term restructuring contracts, which means you're essentially taking this year's money that and you're lessening the, the cap hit and, but you're throwing it into other years and, 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 and making those years more costly against the cap, you know, in order to give you space now. So you're pulling from this year, right, or you're lessening this year, essentially pulling from other years and making those years worse to make this year a better situation for you. He says, we don't do that a lot. And they haven't. If, if you look around... There hasn't been a ton of restructuring since Ron got here. There may have been one or two instances where they've restructured. They've asked guys to take pay cuts. Okay, pay cut is different than restructure, just so we're clear. A restructure is you're still getting all of your money. It's just being reallocated. Okay, so instead of you getting $14 million this year, we're going to lessen that number to $3 million. We're going to give you $11 million of it up front right now, or we'll give you seven of it, you know, in, in the form of a bonus, okay? Another three as a, as a roster bonus, three, seven as a signing, right? Uh, so really, they'll, they'll, they'll convert it into bonuses and things of that nature, maybe push a little bit back to next year, that sort of thing. You get some of your money up front. You're still getting all of your money. It's just in a different manner, right? Most of it is usually bonuses and, and things of that nature. So uh, if you, re, you restructure, you, when you sign your name on the dotted line, it's a signing bonus of $7 million. All right. a, a month from now, you get another roster bonus of $3 million. Okay, And then your cap number comes down to four from 14 to 4, and your base is 4 for the year. Okay, Still got your $14 million, but you restructured it. So bonuses, pushed a little bit of money, guaranteed dollars back, you know, let's say you were guaranteed, you know, 14, 7, 3, uh, we'll take another 2, we'll throw that back a couple more years, spread that out evenly over the last three years of your deal, and now your base salary is $2 million. Still going to get all the money you were supposed to get, we just pushed some of it back, gave you some of it up front, and it gave us some cap relief. So, he's like, we don't, we're, we don't really do that. We don't really have a situation where we're borrowing, you know, uh, against our cap. And it's cash to cap, meaning what you see is what you get. The amount of money we're spending, it's not that much different from a credit card versus cash. You know, we're just paying with cash, you know, so we know it's coming right out of the account. We swipe the debit. We're not hitting credit. We put in the pin number. They're taking it out immediately so we can see exactly what all the transactions look like. And a lot of that is because we don't we're not paying a quarterback right now. You know, that's what usually complicates things because quarterbacks make so much money and they eat up such a large chunk of your cap. So um, he's like, yo, uh, we're, we're doing a really good job and we'd like to keep it that way. So because they asked about why not? What's going on with Chase Rouye? Are you going to restructure him? Or are there some other because pretty much J.P. Finley said, seems like y'all are kind of upside down on the cap right now. Y'all don't have that much space. It's like one point eight million dollars worth of cap space right now. Y'all good over there? What's really good? Y'all going to restructure what y'all going to do? And he's like, hey, trust me. We good over here on the cap. We got this. We straight. So if he's not worried, I'm not worried. Um, tight end room. I knew he was going to feel this way about the tight end room. I don't anticipate us adding anything to the tight end room. I've, I've already told you guys <coughs> there are four players that they love, and then there's another guy that they like. All right, Curtis Hodges is off to the side as a guy that they like, okay? You've got John Bates, you've got Amani Rogers, you've got Cole Turner, and you've got Logan Thomas. Those are the four that they love. They're not doing anything to the tight end position, and he pretty much said that. He didn't say they weren't doing anything, but he didn't 
look, every position that we feel like we need to upgrade, he pretty much said we need to upgrade and we'll be looking. He said nothing of the sort when it came to tight end. Pretty much said, I love the group. Really feel like we got some young, talented players. And he left it at that. So I don't think they're going to do anything there. And, and that was the expectation. That's what I've been telling you guys. I know a lot of you want to add a tight end. It's a deep tight end uh, class coming into the league this year. And you'd love to add one of these guys. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. No, it's not what you want to hear. But the likelihood is, I could be wrong, but the likelihood is they're not going to move on tight end. There are other positions of need that they have that they would like to address. Uh, offensive line, linebacker, corner, um, you know, receiver, running back, defensive end potentially. Um, quarterback, obviously, is another one. There are so many different directions they could go in. Tight end won't be one of them. Cornerback profile. Remember, Martin Mayhew, a former cornerback himself in this league for many years, won a Super Bowl here with the Washington Redskins back in 1991. So um, he looks at that position a little bit differently than most, and he said his thing that he's looking for is competitiveness at the cornerback position. Uh, guys that don't want to give up anything. I, I call it free lunch, right? No free meals over here because you get guys that are okay with giving up the underneath stuff. You know, they just don't want to get beat over the top. And he's like, I'm looking for dudes that don't want to give up nothing. No free food, no free meals over here. If you're going to eat, you're going to earn it. You're going to work for it, but you get no free meals over here. And he's looking for guys that, you know, compete. He said, another thing is you got to be able to run. Now he said, we play a lot of zone. So... Being able to run doesn't always um, find itself at the top of the, the food chain or the pecking order in terms of importance when you're talking about the scheme that we run because we play so much zone. But on third downs, he's like, you got to play some man at times and you got to be able to run if you're going to play man. Big facts, you know. And so length helps offset a lack of speed sometimes. But at the end of the day, he's like, you got to be able to run. And you got to be really competitive. Those are the things and the traits that he's looking for. Length helps, but it's not a, a required um, asset. But it, it's something that definitely does help uh, in that department. But uh, and, and you can see the, the the profile of the guys that we've been looking at of late. They're looking for the long, rangy corners, and all of them can run. You know, Juice isn't a four four guy, but because he's so tall and, and his arms are so long, it offsets the fact that he's not a 4-4, four, four, you know, 6 guy. He's 4-5 too, though. It's not like Juice is running a 4-5-8 or something like that. Juice is, is fast for his size. Uh, so, you know, uh, he talked about the, the profile of what they're looking for in a corner a, as well. They're, they're going to draft a corner. That's pretty much what he, you know, he didn't say it. But again, I like reading in between the lines. I draw inferences. You know, that's why you come to me. You know, you come to me because I draw inferences and I try to make sense of things that sometimes don't make a ton of sense. So I'm telling you, we're getting a corner. That's not news to you. That's not something that is a bombshell. We've been talking about corner, potentially in the first round, uh, for a very long time this offseason. And I think they're going to take a corner uh, for sure. Uh, Cole versus Cody was the discussion that he had with the media during his scrum. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Cole Holcomb versus uh, Cody Barton. Uh, essentially, they swapped those two out. Um, Martin Mayhew is very optimistic on Cody Barton. I'm taking a wait and see approach. I don't love the fact that, you know, Cody Barton uh, is here as the projected starter. We'll see what he does. They see him, or at least Martin Mayhew does, as an ascending player. A guy that uh, last year got his opportunity, was uh, primarily a special teams player the first three years of his career, got an opportunity seized that opportunity, had 136 tackles. He said that at least five times, had two interceptions, said that at least three times, made sure that we knew he had a really good year last year and that they think he fits in well with what they're trying to do and they think he's a player with the arrow pointing up. We'll see. I mean, obviously, he's coming off of the best year of his career. Does it mean that he's going to continue in that direction? All it means is that he got an opportunity, he played – well, but there's really nothing to compare it to. This is his first year playing. Now, again, 136 tackles, a lot of tackles, two interceptions, really good for the linebacker position. These are all good things that he was able to do. However, there's nothing to compare it towards. So we'll see what he does. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's here. He's a member of this team. So I'm rooting for him. I hope he proves me wrong. But right now, I'm not sold on Cody Barton's addition. And I hope and I feel pretty confident that they will 
but I hope that they're not done at the position, them sniffing around different players. They had brought in uh, the linebacker, um, Anthony Walker, uh, from Cleveland. That lets me know that they're not done, and I expect them to add a linebacker or two via the draft. So uh, we'll see what happens with that situation. And then lastly, um, the last thing that kind of caught my attention with uh, Martin Mayhew was them talking about adding a running back. He, for all intents and purposes, said that uh, J.D. McKissick, you know, was a, a huge contributor to this football team. They appreciate everything that he's done for them. Um, and being that they moved on from him, they'd love to add another running back. They have some guys that they like. Obviously, they brought Jonathan Williams back. They're still uh, Jared Patterson sniffing around. But they want to upgrade that position. We, we know what we have in, in Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson they want to add another guy to that mix. They should add another guy to that mix, and I think they will. This is a deep running back draft class. I think they will add another player to that mix, and um, I think that player will be able to come in and, and have an impact right away. He's going to have to play special teams. Obviously, your third running back is going to have to be good on special teams, but uh, th that third running back will have an opportunity to not only make this football team but have an impact if he is able to put things together rather quickly don't rule out free agency. That's still a possibility that they bring in a guy like Jarek McKinnon. Do not rule that out. Uh, they don't have to move on a player like Jarek McKinnon unless somebody else moves on him and you miss out. Again, I think most teams are going to wait. Jarek McKinnon is an older back with injury with the injury history. I think most teams are going to turn to the draft first before looking to give away 3 or $4 million to a veteran back. So... If you can find cheap labor in the draft, that's what you're going to do first. So I think Washington is among those teams that are eyeballing guys like Jarek McKinnon. But at the end of the day, you're going to take to the draft, see if you come away with something first. If the answer is no, then you go out and you seek out a guy like Jarek McKinnon and add him to your roster. But uh, they definitely want to add a running back to the mix. That is for sure. And they um, are going to do that. They're actively looking to do that. So, um Martin Mayhew talked about that as well. Um, obviously, the biggest takeaway from the um, Martin Mayhew presser was the fact that he talked about not being interested in Lamar Jackson, that um, they're not pursuing him. They're going to roll and move forward with Jacoby Brissett, and they're going to move forward with uh, Sam Howell, and, and that's the direction that they're heading in. I think they're looking to add a third quarterback as well, but you know, we'll see what happens they they keep talking about uh, Jake Fromm. I just he's not what I, my idea of a developmental quarterback on the roster. Uh, so hopefully they're not serious about that. But uh, we'll see what ultimately happens. But I don't. They're not pursuing Lamar Jackson. I can tell you that I, I've been adamant about that. Now um, I told you there's one thing that could change that, and we'll talk about that when we talk about what Ron had to say. But um, I thought what Martin Mayhew said was there were a lot of good tidbits. If you haven't checked it out, do yourself a favor, you know, uh, carve out 20 to 25 min minutes to just give Martin Mayhew a listen. And um, you'll be you'll be very pleased that you did because he dropped he dropped some gems on our melon. I'll just tell you that much. And um, Ron did as well. That's what Ron does this time of the year. And so we'll talk about what Ron had to say in greater detail. But. Well, that's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. I look forward to chopping it up with you guys uh, this week. Again, big week here on the Louis T Network. Um, I, and I know you guys are excited about the news. The um, commanders have an official $6 billion bid that has been submitted from... I, I hate the fact that they've turned it into the Magic Johnson team. Like, like Magic's the guy with the most money on this squad. Or, you know, he just joined on like two weeks ago and all of a sudden it's his squad now when they put a headline up magic johnson's group this is still josh harris's bid and johnson is a part of the group that is you know enriched the the bid but you know magic johnson's the name so they're gonna throw him out there nobody really knows who josh harris is so they're gonna throw magic johnson out there but um at the end of the day i don't really give a uh, shit who it is um it, it, obviously someone's going to be the chief you know, operating owner of this team. And so we'll see what happens if there are minority owners. There's going to be a majority stakeholder, someone that is actually the owner. 
that is going to be the one making the decisions. That's ultimately what I care about. But as long as that person's name isn't Daniel M. Snyder, <laughs> uh, sign me up. So uh, a formal bid has been uh, put in. It's the $6 billion that reportedly Daniel Snyder is seeking. Uh, so we'll see what happens from there. And we'll, we'll see if this is the beginning of the end. It feels like it is. But again, as I've told you guys throughout this process, I'm going to take a wait and see approach. But we'll be dancing in the streets soon enough. Don't you worry. It's coming. Bart Scott can't wait. But as I said, huge week on the channel. Tomorrow, you're going to get Rio and uh, Rico and Ed, all of us, on one mega show. Should be a ton of fun to kind of pick those guys' brains, see how they feel about everything that's transpired to this point. Uh, there's been a lot that we can discuss um, going into this offseason uh, or rather into this draft and, and see what they have to say. You know, Rico, he, he dropped the Gemini Melon uh, last year when he said that, um, hey, w watch out for Amani Rogers. And look what ended up happening. So I'm, I'm anxious to see if he has any more gems to drop on our melon this year. Uh, so it should be good to catch up with the fellas. And then Thursday, you've asked, you receive. NFC East Super Friends coming back at you. Bat like cook crack. The Super Friends unite once again to do what we do best. And that's talk trash about our family members as if we ain't first cousins. Should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to doing that. So Wednesday, Rico, Rio, Ed, myself, Washington, Commanders, Roundtable, and then Thursday, NFC East Super Friends. Jam-packed week. Should be a ton of fun. Don't you go anywhere. Hope to see you on Wednesday and on Thursday. But that's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here on the Command Post. You know what it is. Post up and take command. Until next time, you guys, have a good one. God bless. Take care. Louis T. Network. New, new.